Now, how do we describe rotation? We've seen that for a point particle model, all we need to know is the position and velocity, which are both vectors. But how about rotation? Well, let's say this thing is rotating. Let's say it's rotating like this. We can't really use velocity to do it because the velocity of every different place is different. Let's say it's rotating around a hinge down here. The places near the hinge are not moving very much, whereas the places far away from the hinge are moving much further. Or if it's spinning like this, some bits are moving towards you, some bits are moving away from you. So but velocity is not a very useful thing for rotation simply because it varies across the object. Instead, what we normally do is first of all to find the axis of rotation, which is a vector. So let's say this is spinning like this. The axis is going to be pointing out from the middle. This is, well, the axis of rotation, if you like, is if you put a, a post to it, it will be the hinge. So it points along the axis of rotation. If it's rotating like this, the axis of rotation will be along here. Again, it's a vector. Once you've got the axis of rotation, we can then look at how much something is rotated as an angle. So for example, at the moment, let's say this is the axis of rotation, and I move this to there. It's moved around the axis by about 90 degrees, pi over 2 radians. How do you convert between angles of rotation and the actual motion of some part of an object? Let's say we have some random shaped object, and let's say it's rotating about an axis over here. That circle with the dot means it's an axis pointing out of the screen towards you. And let's say it rotates by some angle theta. So to begin with, it's over here, and sometime later it's gone over here. That angle is theta, the original position was here, and it's moved round to there as the whole object rotates. Okay, so what's this distance that's gone here? Well, let's say theta was 180 degrees. In that case, it's gone all the way around and back to where it started from. And the distance travelled, if that is r, the distance is going to be the circumference of a circle of radius r, which is just 2 pi r. But no, it's not got an entire circle. It's only got a fraction of a circle, like a, a wedge of pi. What fraction of the total circle has it done? Well, it's gone theta over the entire angle. So if it's in degrees, that will be theta over 360 degrees. In radians, a full circle is 2 pi radians. That would be 2 pi r theta over 2 pi, which just comes out as r theta in radians. So this is one of the reasons we normally use radians. It's a very simple relationship between the angle you rotate and the distance you move, just multiply by the radius. Whereas in degrees, it's a bit more complicated. I suppose we can simplify this down. It'll be uh, pi theta over 180, which is a more clunky equation. I'll add an r in there as well.